we've created something wild. With a fire in its belly. This thing draws everything in. Moving silently, night and day. Into the deepest blacks and brightest lights. Its eye, razor sharp. Its sound, deafening. Pretty. Dangerous. So why would anyone give this beast more power? You'd have to be reckless. we done. And more importantly, what will you do?
to installation.
This is the 16 inch Apple MacBook M1 Max. And this is a laptop of the G GTX 3060. Now let's find out how well they both perform playing three games. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and thank you for joining us on the channel again. And today I'm taking a look at the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. And if you're joining us for the very first time, we do videos like this where we do comparisons that make no sense. So if you wanna watch more, hit that subscribe button and notification icon to get notified with more videos. So Apple's new um, MacBook Pro, right? They talked about it, they showcased graph, they said, look, this bad boy uh, gives you performance and power. They even touted that, hey, look, it's closer to a 3080 in terms of this graphical performance. But from what I've seen so far, a lot of people say, hey, look, it's closer to a 3060. And I thought to myself, oh, well, I've got the Victus laptop from HP here. This has a 3060 graphics card and also runs the AMD 5800 series um, uh, CPU. So how well does it stack up in terms of gaming? Before we get to that, let's look at the 60 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. Now this thing is a gorgeous looking laptop. I've got to say Apple has outdone themselves with this device. And the best part of it honestly is the display. That mini LED display looks absolutely gorgeous. Your wallpapers really stand out. When you're gaming, it's so vivid. Now the notch is there, it's kind of annoying, but when you're playing, like everything just is seamless. You've got bigger bezels there, but you kind of jump into the gameplay experience. Build quality is nice. You've got some really great speakers on here, which you listen to in some of the gameplay. And overall, you've got all the ports that you need for a pro device, right? But the cool thing about this device is that with the, M, uh, the M1 Max that you can play games at really good settings, right? But you can do this without actually plugging the device. We do know very well on PCs and gaming laptops, you have to be plugged in, which is what I had to do with the Victus. And that's just standard. But with this though, you don't have to. So we started to look at some of the games that we like to check out. And the very first game is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is available on Steam on both a Mac and as well as also on PC. And we ran both of them uh, through the benchmarks uh, at uh, the highest settings and the results were interesting. Uh, we got 85 frames per second on the uh, 16 inch uh, M1 Max, while we got 81 frames per second on the Vectors for the 3060. That's pretty close and that is pretty solid to see. Both were, were run at a resolution of uh, 1080p. But again, slight edge goes to the M1 Max. Now, when we moved over to a game like Borderlands 3, which is a much newer game, and again, available on the Epic Game Store for both PC and Mac, this is where we saw some differences, but it's not as far off as you think. While playing the game on Ultra, uh, we're able to get only 29 to 30 frames per second, uh, especially when the benchmarks, but when we went to the lower settings, we were able to get to 56 frames per second. Now, I will warn you guys that I could not drop the resolution down to 1080p. I got a pseudo 2K because the system just couldn't find the right resolution, I guess, because of the notch. You just couldn't find something that fit. Now, with the 3060, though, we were able to, uh, to actually uh, run the benchmarks at the highest settings and get it at 65 frames per second. So. You can see here, maybe this is because it's a PC, the game might be more stable for it than with the M1. Uh, we don't know yet, but that's the only one that had the biggest difference. Now, the final game is Fortnite. Now, this is a game that we know quite well that runs well on both devices. We know it runs well on a Mac, we know it runs well on a PC. Performance though is quite interesting. Now, resolution 1080p uh, for the PC, this was slightly lower than 1080p for the M1 Max, but of course we had the highest settings at Epic, and on the PC, it basically was locked at 60 frames per second. That is what we got, that was the highest, and it ran pretty well. Now, on the M1 Max, we got between 80 to 100 frames per second, which was really impressive and the fans didn't even kick in that loud. Like they did turn on, you could hear them, but honestly, they weren't loud. And again, I wasn't plugged in. I didn't plug this in while I had to plug this in, which is honestly, it's tremendous, right? So to me, what that tells me is that when you look at both devices, the M1 Max, yes, is slightly above a 3060. 
Yes, it's not fully optimized yet because it just came out. So a lot of these games are not optimized, but off the bat, we can see it gets closer to a 3060 than a 3080. So according to what Apple implied, this is not closer to a high-end gaming laptop. This is closer to a uh, low to mid-tier gaming laptop. So that is what you should expect. Now with the price difference, the 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro is a $3,800 uh, machine. This is roughly around $1,500 to $1,800. So you can see there's a difference there in price. But when you look at what Apple has created though, as a device that can do a lot of things and also game, it kind of makes me happy. Uh, I mean, I'm not a MacBook Pro user. Um, I will not recommend anyone to game on a MacBook Pro but it means that Apple now has devices that developers can make games for, which is good, which is honestly good. It means that if you have a MacBook Pro, hopefully in the future, there is a possibility where more games will come to the system and you can actually play more of the games you love. You don't have to go out and build a PC or uh, buy a, a gaming rig or any of that stuff. It's that, that it is capable of doing that. Now, it's not capable to the 3080, uh, you know, um, statements or say pseudo statements that Apple said but I'm happy to see that they've done a fantastic job and I really like the way this machine is built sadly I just don't use a Mac so that would be interesting to see how if I ever try to use it for a week it would be worth it and Daniel's like nah they won't waste your time anyway guys before I leave I'll pose this question for you should I install Windows here on the Mac and see how native Windows runs and also how games perform if you want me to do that, let me know. That would be kind of weird though because there are no NVIDIA drivers or AMD drivers or anything like that. But we'll see how that performs. If you guys want to do, leave those comments down below. Otherwise, thank you very much and always enjoy entertainment.